where do we start with this one? Um, we want a quarterback, obviously, that's going to rack up yardage and throw touchdowns. We also like the dual threat quarterbacks because they score their own touchdowns, and we're getting a couple more points for those. Um, when you start to sift through quarterbacks, where they're going to go in the first round as compared to wide receivers and running backs, um, what's your look at early quarterbacks first and where you should look in the first round? All right, so I'm never going to really jump on and take a quarterback in the first round of a fantasy football draft. Like, I don't really think there's a quarterback that's that elite because really when you look at the end of the year scoring, right, this is where you break it down. At the end of the year, quarterback one can score about 20 more fantasy points than quarterback six. So you're really splitting hairs when it comes down to these points. But I really, the way I'm looking at it this year is I do – have a list of about seven quarterbacks that I think um, guys that I'm going to be willing to go into the fantasy football season with. And most of them are probably going to go in that round as early as round four and probably as late as round eight. So that's kind of the sweet spot that I'm looking at right there for quarterbacks where I can probably land one of those seven guys. So I'm not really in most drafts. I'm going to come to the quarterback or any position. I'm just going to let the draft come to me and grab the quarterback at the spot where I think the value is right. So going into the season, I had five guys, Chris, that I literally was debating over if they could be my QB one or not. That's how close I think it is together Mm -hmm. with the rankings of these players. So um, to me, QB one going into this year, despite the controversy going on in Philadelphia right now between Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts, which has been discussed, you know, this week, here's the deal. Jalen Hurts and his dual threat ability, not to mention the fact weapons like A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, you get Saquon Barkley this year, but then you also get Kellen Moore, an offensive coordinator who is going to move the football down the field. We have seen Kellen Moore quarterbacks put up good fantasy numbers. We kind of know what his offense looks like, and that is the reason why, and just looking for a bounce back, why I have Jalen Hurts as my QB1 going into this year, slightly ahead of Josh Allen. Where do you start to look for him? Um, like mid to late second, later? When, when if, if, he, if he's going to be clear-cut number one, if he's going to be that much of a value over anybody else, um, when do you look for to, to snag him before somebody else jumps up and steals him? So this really depends on the scoring when it comes to the quarterback touchdown passes. If you're in a league where a quarterback gets six points for the touchdown pass, I would start looking at guys like Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen in around round number three. So around that third round, your third player coming off the board, if you want one of those elite quarterbacks in a league where you get six points for passing touchdown. If you get four points for passing touchdown, I'm not really worried about that quarterback until about rounds four or five. Now, you could see some of the Jaden Hurts and the Josh Loves come off. And, I mean, excuse me, Josh Allen's come off. But then that's when I look at guys like Jordan Love, Lamar Jackson, and then Anthony Richardson would be the guy that would be my quarterback five going into the year. I think Anthony Richardson is a guy that has a tremendous upside to have a big season. Last year, wasn't healthy much, but the games he did play in, he was, and he didn't complete these games. He was averaging 14 fantasy points a game. No, excuse me. He was averaging 18 fantasy points a game. That's the same number that Patrick Mahomes closed with last year. So a lot of these people that are thinking it's ridiculous or out of sorts to have Anthony Richardson as QB1, he can finish there, and you're seeing him go off the board as QB1. So these five guys right here, Hurts, Allen, Jordan Love, who I like a lot this year, Lamar Jackson and Anthony Richardson, I don't want to say they're interchangeable as a number as QB1, but I do think that you're not going to miss anything. Like I don't think nobody's going to that significantly outperform each other in that group of five right there. And if you want to go with Josh Allen, as QB1, I have no problems with that, especially now with no Stephon Diggs. Josh Allen is the playmaker on the Buffalo Bills. Yeah. So those two quarterbacks at the top right there, they get too much work. So I don't, that's the top five that I'm going with right now. So you mentioned Mahomes in passing there, but you didn't mention him in that top tier of five quarterbacks. Where do you have him? I got Patrick Mahomes as quarterback six. Um, They sh- – the deep ball is going to come back to the Kansas City Chiefs offense this year. 
Last year, this team was really led by their defense, and Mahomes did what Mahomes did enough to get it done. Mahomes is still an elite fantasy option at the quarterback. No real dual threat ability. He runs some, but he's not going to have a 70-yard rushing game like you can see from some of these other quarterbacks. Now, the weapons are not as elite as they were in the past. Travis Kelsey is still going to roam in the middle of the field, but you do add worthy Hollywood Brown into the mix. We'll see what the deal is with Rasheed Rice as we get closer to kickoff. So the talent in the pieces are still there. Just a slight knock. Obviously, no electric playmaker like Ty Hill. And then, you know, the fact that he is not going to have ever really be a guy to run for 70 yards a game. Yeah, and, and Stroud has shown a little bit of mobility, C.J. Stroud, and everybody is all over him and the Texans this offseason. They are the darlings going into the preseason. Um, what's your outlook on Stroud, and where does where does he rank? If we've worked our way through the top six, is he number seven? Is it Burrow? No, actually, C.J. Stroud is QB 12. He just made, you know, the rankings as a top 12 quarterback to me. Now, does that mean that I think C.J. Stroud's going to have a bad season? No. Like I say, these top 12 players are going to be pretty close together when you look at the final numbers. As a matter of fact, just to kind of prove this point, when you go to last season and look at the final numbers, uh, Jalen Hurts finished as QB2 with 371 fantasy points. QB, QB5 was Jordan Love with 330. QB9 was two over 285. So these numbers are still relatively pretty close together. Now, Josh Allen last year was 410, but Josh Allen had 29 touchdown passes and 15 rushing touchdowns. And you see Jalen Hurts also had 15 rushing touchdowns as well. Patrick Mahomes is never going to have 15 rushing touchdowns. That's critical. That's key right there. Um, so Stroud is a guy who, despite everybody being in love with him this year last year he finished as qb7 280 fantasy points now he doesn't have big rushing upside he rushed for 167 yards last year three rushing touchdowns but really what you're depending on with stroud is for that passing number to get up to about 4500 and that touchdown number to a uh, flirt with 30 and that is where you really can see cj stroud take off and have a season kind of like how dak prescott uh, had last year in the regular season when he was good. So that le you actually led right into the next guy I was going to ask about, which is Dak Prescott, who had a, a, a great fantasy year last year. Um, what's Especially in a year where I, I think a lot of us understand he's probably playing for his next contract. He's playing to be that guy that hits the market in the offseason and maybe goes out and cashes a $60 million a year check. Um, what do you, do you expect Prescott to hold steady and, how do you how do you look at this is another question I wanted to ask you, but we'll just lump them all together here since we're talking Dak. How do you take your fan glasses off? Because I know you're a Cowboys fan. Like I have the same problem. And I go in fantasy drafts and I see people have that problem with their favorite teams, right? Like I always end up ranking the players on my favorite teams higher than I should. Do you have difficulty either way in looking at Prescott and saying, Yeah, but because Dak's disappointed you in the past? So listen. You got to put that to side when you're trying to win money yeah. in fantasy football. And the truth of the matter is Dak Prescott was an elite fantasy option last season. Dak Prescott last year had the best statistical season of his career because of Mike McCarthy as the play caller. And I just talked about how good Kellen Moore can be for fantasy. Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott were really on the same page last year. C.D. Lamb, a top target, highly involved. Dak is not going to give you no rushing upside. But Dak on a Cowboy team that I think should be a down Cowboy team this year has, listen, 4,500 passing yard upside. He, like I said, he's not going to give you anything rushing. He could score a couple rushing touchdowns. He's a guy that's definitely going to flirt with about 30 passing touchdowns. Now, I just worry that shenanigans could be in place. Did I, you know what I'm saying? With play calling and stuff like that, as Jerry Jones tries to keep that 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 contract number down and and you think that's crazy oh no we've known instances in the past that they do that in dallas they will lower your production when it gets close to payday that i'd be honest with you has me a little bit apprehensive this year because it feels to me and we'll talk to jlc in the next hour it feels to me like this is dax last ride in dallas so that mm -hmm. kind of has me skeptical on what kind of fantasy season he can have 
But if I'm in round six and most of those elite quarterbacks are gone and I'm looking at Dak Prescott and Tua, I probably would go Tua, but I would take Dak Prescott over C.J. Stroud. All right, who's somebody you're looking to avoid at all costs when you're looking for a quarterback this year? Well, we're looking at to avoid it all costs, you really want some of those guys that are like statues in the pocket. And for the most part, guys like Trevor Lawrence don't really have big fantasy upside. I don't think that we're going to see a situation where Justin Herbert with all of those, you know, missing those weapons and dealing with plantar fascia. He's a guy that I'm not really interested in having this year. Matthew Stafford can give you good numbers, but you always got to worry about, you know, the realm of injuries when it comes to Matthew Stafford as a player who's a little bit older. Baker Mayfield finished last season as QB 10. I got to play quarterback chicken for a long time to walk away from a draft with Baker Mayfield as my QB one. That offensive coordinator situation is going to be different in Tampa this year, and Baker Mayfield doesn't really give you any oomph, anything extra. He kind of has to play perfect for you to have a good fantasy season with him. I mean, don't get me wrong, the rest of your team can be solid as well, but those are some of the guys that I'm not really as high on. If you have the ability to grab one of these young rookie quarterbacks in what may be a keeper or a dynasty league and use them as your QB2, uh, kind of stash them there and keep them, which one are you looking at if you can do that late in a draft, if there's an opportunity to do so? Washington commander quarterback, Jaden Daniels. I think this could be a very interesting uh, fantasy season for Jaden Daniels. He has the tools to be QB1 in fantasy football. Now, is he going to do that this year? Cam Newton did, right? So we really don't know because this is going to be the type of player as far as his dual threat capabilities that we haven't really seen before or really since like that rookie year of that second season, excuse me, of Lamar Jackson. He got a quarterback in Cliff Kingsbury that's very good when it comes to putting together, um, you know, it comes to having good fantasy seasons. And weapons on the outside don't really matter because I look at him as the weapon. I have Jaden Daniels going into the year as my QB7. I, I really think he can have a better year than Patrick Mahomes when it comes to wow. fantasy numbers. I am really high on Jaden Daniels as a fantasy QB. He should be a starter in a 12-team league. I'm going to repeat this. Jaden Daniels is a starting quarterback in a 12-team league. He's not a backup in a 12-team league. He's a starter. I expect a big season from him.